What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be pushing the limits of Revit modeling to its limits and I'm going to be trying to replicate a realistic looking tablecloth in Revit. Now this is extremely difficult to recreate just because of the Revit tools they're not really created for well making something that looks like this and it's sometimes hard to get the right shape but I did manage to create something that looks like this and I'm very very happy with that. So today I'm just going to be showing you how to model something uh, something like that in Revit. So that's what th this video is going to be all about. Now before we get into that, one quick thing, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial. It helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm and also make sure to subscribe. I make useful Revit tutorials each week. I make multiple tutorials plus I make one advanced Balkan Arctic course. All of the courses can be found on my Patreon. First link in the description of this video. I've got over 45 hours of content plus all of my Revit project files over 300 files so far. Okay with that quick <laughs> advertisement for my Patreon out of the way let's get into the tutorial. Here we are in Revit and before we get started with modeling one thing that we really need to make sure that we make the correct selection and that's the correct template. Now this is going to be modeled as a family. Now you can do it inside of a project but I suggest you do it as a family. So the family template that we need to choose is uh, right over here. So we go to families and go to new and now we're not going to go with something like I don't know furniture or generic model. No, I'm going to go here to conceptual mass and then create this as a metric mass. So just double click over here and there we go. Now it's going to open up. Now that Revit has opened up the uh, just the uh, conceptual mass environment, I'm going to navigate here into level one and now let's insert that table. Now you can make model the, the table yourself. Now I just prefer just importing because it's going to make it uh, a bit quicker for this tutorial. So I'm just going to go here to component and of course none are loaded so we have to go click yes and then we can load in a component. So I'm going to navigate here to the uh, furniture folder, open up tables and then uh, you just select the table here and then here you have a little preview and then you can use the arrow keys to scroll down. Now we have multiple options and I'm just going to go with the last option which is m uh, underscore table dash round. So just double click there and there we go. And I'm just going to place it here in the center of our family. So if you zoom in a little bit, there we go. There's our circular table. Same thing goes if we go into the default 3D view, select that table. And if we orbit around, there you go. We have this uh, small table. Now to model the cloth, the first thing that we need to do is create some reference uh, planes. So to do something like that, we have to navigate to one of the elevations. I'm going to go to the south elevation just because that's the one that I mostly use for stuff like this. And now once we're in the south elevation, let's create our uh, reference planes. So I'm going to go here into plane or RP is the shortcut. And then you want to create the one that's here on top of this table. So I'm just going to go like this select it and maybe extend it a little bit and for the name I'm just going to type in a one. So this is going to be the first one and actually just select it and then use the arrow keys to just bring it a little bit above the table. So that's that that will do. Next let's go again to reference plane and again with the line. Now I'm going to go here from the edge of the table and I'm just going to kind of go like this. So that's the height. Go all the way to the other side, click again and then select it again and maybe extend it over here on this side as well and then let's name this one number two. Now number three is going to go right below that so let's go from here and then let's go with something like this. Now the distance is I don't know something like a hundred millimeters or ten centimeters and this is going to be number three. Okay once we have that for the final one number four it's going to be a bit lower so we can have extra waviness and then let's select this one and name it number four. There we go. We can bring it maybe a little bit up. Maybe 300 millimeters will be enough. 
Now, once we have all of that in place, it's time to create our uh, table cloth. So the table cloth will be modeled as a series of profiles. So you model them by going here into floor plan uh, level one. And then here I'm going to go to set work plane and then I'm just going to choose it by name and I'm going to go and choose that uh, reference plane one, the first one. Next, go with a simple circle from the center and here before you click anywhere, make sure that here it's not set to draw on face but draw on work plane and here just double check that it's set to reference plane one. Once we have that in place, you just go click once in the center, pull it out a little bit and then you can click anywhere here near the line, just a little bit on the outside of this inner uh, circle of the table. Next, let's drop this down to reference plane number two. Again, making sure that the draw work plane is set or that this uh, menu is set on draw on work plane. Again, go from center and then just go a little bit on the outside of this external circle. Now you will notice that if you scroll down, it's going to disappear for a second, but if you hold it for a second, it will appear. Now I'm just going to place it right there. There we go. Hit the escape key a couple of times just to just to escape that. Now I'm going to go into 3D just to see what this looks like. So as you can see here we have one circle on top and then one here a bit below that. Now we're getting to the fun part. So let's go back into a level one. Uh, let's go here to set work plane. And in this case, let's go with reference plane number three. Click OK. And uh, for now, I'm going to choose the spline tool. And again, make sure that here it's set to draw on work plane. And here, just double check that it's on number three. Okay, now I'm going to click somewhere here, maybe a little bit on the outside, and then I'm going to go with a zigzag line around our table, just like this. You can zoom out a little bit. So there we go. So it's just a small zigzag line that goes all the way around. Kinda like that. So not too many, not too little, just go like that. And then here for the end, I'm just going to click like this. And now uh, I'm just going to hit the escape key a couple of times. There we go. Now you will notice that if you try to adjust this or kind of place it at the same point, you might get an error message. So as you can see here, uh, you get an error message. So just make sure that you place this uh, just near the edge, but not exactly on the edge. And maybe we can adjust this to bit, look a bit more natural. And also I suggest you uh, align these so they overlap a little bit. And to just adjust the uh, last point, because if you grab this point, you're going to mess the whole thing up as you can see. So let's hit escape or let's go back once. So in order to move that to just the last point, you have to hit the tab key once and now you can just move the last point. So there we go. We have something that looks like this. And in this case, I would switch to wireframe just to see that spline a bit uh, better. OK, so once we have that spline in place, now it's time to set the work plane to reference plane number four. Click OK and then go with a spline again. Again, double, sure, uh, double check that here it's uh, set to reference plane number four and here just make sure that it says draw on work plane. Now we can go ahead and continue this. So I'm just going to start close to this point and then I'm going to go to the other side and I'm going to follow this wave form just making larger zigzags. So as you can see I am following the form just making a lot uh, larger zigzags. So here we go. And just go like that here again so here as you can see here's that little uh, bump on the bottom so we're just going to go all the way here then here's the bump on top so we're going to go here so you're basically repeating the pattern but you're doing it a bit uh, more aggressively and that's exactly what you want to have for this underside so we can have a cooler a cooler effect so we're just going to finish the same way just a little bit near this and then go to modify perhaps to escape out of that. So there we go. 
Now, if we try to create this into a form, and let's just go into the default 3D view to try that, and as you can see, this is what it should look like. Now, if I try to select all of these profiles, and I'm just calling the control key to add selection and go create form, you're going to get an error message. Now, the reason for that is these bottom two are opened uh, lines and the two top ones are loops or circles. So what you need to do is go back into level one, find these circles and then use the split element tool in order to add just uh, a gap there. Now you can select both gaps just like this, hit the delete key, there we go, and go back into 3D and there we go. Now I select the top one, the, the second one, the third one and the fourth one holding the control key, go to create form and it doesn't work. Well, uh, as you can see, uh, it's not going to work each time, so you do have to play around a little bit. So let me let me just play around a little bit, mess mess around, and then let's try again. And there we go. As you can see, with just a little bit of adjustment here with these edge points, we have gotten that cool kind of drape shape. And there you go. It looks it looks really cool. It looks almost realistic. Now you are going to get these weird patterns. Revit just finds it a bit difficult to represent this realistically. But if you turn it to realistic, it can look a bit better. You're still going to have some problem spots, but it, it is going to look a lot better. Now here on top, what you need to do is just because we can't create a closed loop because we have split this circle in half, we have to go back into level one go to circle, uh, set it to reference plane 1 again, and then let's create a circle here again at the same spot. Select that circle, let's go into 3D. Again, let's select that circle, go to create form, and then let's go with this form and let's just delete the top. And there we go. Now we have that uh, tablecloth. Now you can select all of these elements and then add a material so we can search for some material. Let's see, uh, huh. let's go here at home and check that we have something interesting. Let me just expand this menu a little bit. Here we should have some fabric materials or something. Here we go, fabric. There we go, we've got some canvas and leather and whatever. Let's go with this one because it's it looks the part. And you can open up the preview. And there we go. Looks almost like the thing that we have created. That's cool. Let's hit apply. OK. And there we go. Oh, well, it looks similar. So there we go. That's how you create this, well, hopefully realistic tablecloth. I think I hope uh, you have enjoyed uh, watching this. And I hope you have learned something new. It is a bit different. And it is a bit awkward to model something like this in Revit. But once you get the hang of it, you can get something that looks fairly uh, realistic. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you want to download this project file, check out my Patreon, first link in the description. Also there, I've got some advanced courses that go really in-depth into all of the all of Revit's tools and features and pretty much everything you need to know about Revit in depth. They, all of the courses are over one hour long and like the total runtime is, I think I've got over 45 hours of content over there. So it's really cool. Check it out. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video and I'll be back with another Balkan Arctic tutorial in a couple of days. Have a nice day.